Hello and thanks very much for joining me. I'm Dean from Woodwork Journey. Today we're going to be making a clock, but not only are we going to be making a clock, but we're going to be making it with wood from B&Q, which you wouldn't normally do. We're also going to uh, make it for under £15, which is super cheap. Now in this video, it's a little bit longer than I would have liked, but that's because I made a bunch of mistakes and I figured I would take you through the entire journey because hopefully it will help inspire or uh, give you guys an idea. Now, just because I've made this clock up here doesn't mean to say yours has to look the same. You'll see why it looks the way it does as we go through the video, but this is hopefully just to show you the basics of making a super basic clock really cheaply and then you can just let your creative juices do whatever you like. All right, enjoy. Hi and welcome back to Woodwork Journey. I'm Dean and today we're doing something a little bit different. So in my little pocket up here, I have my wallet and in my wallet is a single £10 note. In that, With that £10 note, what I want to do is show you how we can make a clock for under £20 from easily available wood from your local big box store. Now, if you're in the UK, we are going to be going to B&Q, which I wouldn't ordinarily suggest because uh, wood quality is a bit iffy, but it is available pretty much everywhere. So I'm going to show you how to make a clock with wood that we get today with that tenor minimal tools and with alternatives to any tools that I do use that uh, that yeah could be a thing um I'm not including the cost of nails or not nails, screws or, uh, or or finishes in this. But again, I will try and offer some cheap alternatives for that. But hopefully I'll give you the confidence to be able to make something kind of cool uh, this weekend in a matter of a day or two. So, yeah, let's crack on and we'll see if we can uh, see if we can get some wood. All righty then, let's see what we can go and find. Like I said, I'm only going to B&Q because uh, it's most likely that you're going to be able to see something like this near where you live. But also uh, because they do things like have a, a, a cutting service and all that sort of nonsense as well. So let's see how we get on. So the first thing we're going to do is see if they've got a clearance aisle or something like that going on here. See if we can find any bargains for the day. There is also the option of using oak which you can get from uh, B&Q and various places. However, it does increase the cost pretty significantly. Let me show you what I mean. 25 thick, 92 by 2,400, 51 pounds. So we've got sort of the 20 mils thereabouts. It's a reasonable sum of money. And what we're looking for is something that's reasonably thick as well. So it's going to be able to, to take us through what we need to do. So that's why we're going for a cheap and cheerful pine. And uh, yeah, let's see how we can make it look. Okay, so new revelation that the uh, um, larger pieces of, of uh, plank type wood, so what I was looking at is too small for their saw to cut down. So a two and a half meter piece or a 2.4 meter piece isn't gonna fit in my car. So I've got to rethink what I'm gonna be using. Interesting. I think I've found the reason why uh, a lot of people don't like buying wood from here. <laughs> that is a healthy bow going on right there. Good if you're going to buy, uh, build a boat, I suppose. Okay, so before we set off for home, I should probably tell you exactly how much that's cost me. Um, it is a bit annoying that they couldn't um, cut up the wood that I would have ordinarily wanted. Um, but, uh, you know, we've had to make do. We've had to go for a 1.8 length rather than, uh, than 2.4. And also, it came to a phenomenal £5.27. Now, it is 18mm uh, wide, 70mm 70 mil uh, wide sorry and 18 mil thick and it's a 1.8 meter piece but yeah that came to five pounds and uh, 57 did i just say um which 
you know, five pound twenty-seven, which isn't isn't terrible. I mean, it's not great for that for what I've just got, but um, but yeah. Anyway, let's get back and see if we can make a clock out of this, shall we? <laughs> Okay, so we're finally back with this piece of wood. Now, like I said, it is a thickness of 18 millimeters. It's 70 mil wide in that way, and it's 1800 mil long. Now, I probably could have got a turn 2.4 in my car. It's a Citroen Picasso at the end of the day, so I probably could have done, but um, I didn't because there's probably a lot of you out there that don't have a large car. So uh, I figured getting something like this of the 1.8 kind of length should do something okay. Now, it's one of the straightest ones that I could find and uh, it is what it is. Now it's not completely rough sawn, it is planed um, and so that means we have got sort of uh, square edges and are they actually square? Yes they look square which is going to make our lives a lot easier because um, then we're going to have to worry about doing some jointing but we'll see about that in a little while. Now obviously when it comes to something of, uh, of this kind of size we're going to have to cut this up and in order to cut it up I could use all manner of things like the table saw or you could use a hand saw or a circular saw or a jigsaw but I am going to use because it's super cheap and I put it on the channel uh, a little while ago my little titan chop saw um, because it, my little mitre saw rather because it's super cheap and it's an easy way of uh, of cutting through wood so what I'm going to look at doing is just measuring this up but I, I think I'm going to be looking at about a 12 inch diameter so I'm going to see if I can get 13 inches so what's that 300 325 maybe um, milk and we'll see see if we, what sort of thing we can cut up onto this one. So I'm just going to measure this up and see what we can do because my maths is terrible. The lengths, we've got 1800 in length divided by 340. We should get five as well. So I'm going to go for five cuts of 340 thereabouts. That should give us more than we need um, out of this here piece of wood. Let's get it done. Okay, so clear up some of the sawdust that we just made because I didn't attach the uh, vacuum to it. And these are the pieces of wood that we've just sawn up. So when it comes to jointing, um, although this is planed already, this isn't gonna, uh, gonna go together super easily or super well, but let's just have a little look and see if we can try and minimize any of those gaps straight off the bat because we will have to clamp some in, but I think we are going to have to pop these into the, uh, into the, the uh, or get some hand planing going on over the top of them, just to see if we can get as few of the gaps out as we can. Ordinarily, I would think about grain pattern and, you know, trying to get the grain to look pleasant and all that sort of stuff, but that's not what we're here to do today. That This is just to kind of get an idea how we can make a clock and then we can kind of pull it together ourselves. So with that, I don't, oh, hang on, hang on. If I don't have to, ah, I wonder if I can get away with that. If I don't have to do too much with it, that might make it easier for you as well. So I think what we're gonna do here is go for something like this. Turn it over, see what it looks like on that side. Is that a little bit cleaner? Maybe a little bit cleaner on that side. We are going to have to do a little bit of jointing, but we can do that with a hand plane amongst other things. So, uh, yeah, let's crack on to this and we can get it gluing up, leave it overnight, and then uh, when I can, I can come back in tomorrow and finish it up. But this is going to be the basis of our, uh, of our clock. So what I'm going to do before anything else, I'm just going to draw a triangle and this triangle means that I've got a little way that I can tell which way is which, which panels get attached to which. Don't know if you'll be able to see it on there, but uh, yeah, you'll be able to see um, that. Because if something like that happens, then you can easily match up the right pieces with the right pieces. So we're going to try and keep this in order because what I want to do is take these two pieces. I'm going to, these two are going to get jointed together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flick that 
around like so. So those are the two pieces that are going to be together. And then I'm going to flick that so those sides are next to each other. Then we're going to throw that into the vise. Okay, so I'm using a number five plane just to see about getting a little bit off of these because I want these two to be exactly the same. So to do that, what we're looking at doing is looking at getting a, 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 an absolutely straight kind of push through there. And that's why I'm using the five as opposed to a four. So I can try and make sure that I've got a nice big base um, to keep things stabilized. Okay, that one is looking pretty sweet. So I think we can uh, do the others now in exactly the same way. What I'm going to be using for this clamp up is for is, is basically what I've showed you guys before in a previous video about showing how to use um, F clamps and turn them into parallel clamps. So I've got F clamps sitting in some sliced wood here. Um, I've got a couple of sort of height adjusters going on right here. And that means that when I put my wood in here like so, and when I go to clamp them up, that will be all at the right height, which is uh, exactly what we need. So this is how I'm gonna clamp everything up. I might pop another couple on there as well, and uh, maybe something sort of solid on the top there. But I'm gonna be using tight bond three. So we're gonna be throwing some of that in, basically because it's, uh, it's still pretty cold here. Um, and uh, I'm thinking that this might, uh, might hold and might even set a little bit better. Right, let's get this glued up. Got nice little beads of glue on every single joint there, so that's going well. And uh, we'll give that a little bit of a wipe down. Not too fussed about it being perfect at this stage because we can always plane it down later, but uh, shouldn't have used a bit of blue rag for that. Found a couple of old table legs, which should do the trick. If I pop them on there like that, that'll keep everything nice and clamped down, but I better put some tape on them just in case they stick. Now you could also be doing this with putting weight on the top of it or all manner of other things. It doesn't have to be a whole bunch of clamps, but I'm still using the uh, the cheapy ones that I told you about from Amazon um, in my uh, um, cheap stuff for woodworkers pre-Christmas video. Um, and that's doing a, uh, and they're doing a grand job still. Looking flat to me, that'll do. Right, see what happens tomorrow. Okay, so we have been gluing up all night. Same clothes, different hat, new day. <laughs> it's the weekend, I can't be bothered. Right, let's just get these puppies undone and we'll see how we've, uh, how we've done. Okay, the moment of truth. Hey, that is reasonably straight. Can you see that? That doesn't look bad at all, I don't think. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I don't drill these dog holes um, in any specific places. I know I probably should, but I don't. So we're just gonna pop these in here and here, I think. Uh, maybe in there as well. Get our wood in there, like so. And then I'm going to use my number five plane again, just to uh, get over some of the, the nastiness, just get things nice and flat before worrying about sanding. Okay, so now we're reasonably smooth. There's still a little bit of uh, pencil marks on the top there, but let's use a bit of, uh, bit of straight wood and we will go corner to corner because what we want to do is find the middle. Really, you want to put a compass on there or something like that so you can really kind of get your uh, circle going. I haven't got a compass that big. Um, you could also put a drawing pin in there with a bit of string attached to it and draw your circle that way. Um, but I think I'm going to have another idea. I'll be right back. All righty then. So what I've done is I've just quickly made a, uh, a compass. These are some knobs that I've been making out of resin, which I think is fine. Carriage bolt through the top there, couple of washers, straight bits of wood, six mil hole for the front of my pencil, and a, uh, a, and a screw, and, uh, and away you go. That 
here's my big old compass so yeah I needed one so I'm pleased about that righty so let's find the middle which is about there want to go as wide as we can go which is about there let's check and we've got the width we have okay make sure that's really seated in the middle there big old circle can you see that hopefully you can see that yes there's now a circle on the wood which is uh which is what we want so let's see about cutting it Okay, so there is a bunch of ways that we can cut this out. We can cut it with a jigsaw. You can even put a bit a, a jigsaw on a on a bit of string to try and help you make sure that you get this nice and round. We can use a uh, a bandsaw jig and we can use a router jig, all sorts of things. I think I'll probably use the bandsaw jig. I'll just show you me using it. Uh, but if you want me to break it down a little bit more, then please do let me know. As you know, with the compass, this is super easy to make, obviously, but um, only took me a couple of minutes. But um, if you want to, if you don't know how to make one, you want me to show you, let me know. But yes, so let's just cut this circle out of here, shall we? Hmm, let's. Okay, so that is the disc shape cut out and it's all uh, held together nicely. We've got options now. We can run this around a router um, or we can run a router around it, which I might do actually. Um, we can also just sand the edges. You can use a rasp or a file or just be as creative as you want to be. But we've got the basics for the clock. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to uh, round off the sides with the router and uh, then, uh, then we'll see about a couple of finishing touches before we pop some finish on it. Okay, now a great way of remembering which way your router is going to be going is using the thumb, the right hand, thumb up, thumb down. So if, if the blade is facing upwards like that, that's thumb up. And if it's facing down, it's thumb down. And the, um, the spin is the same as your fingers. So in this instance, it's spinning anti-clockwise. In that instance, it's spinning clockwise. So if it's spinning anti-clockwise, we don't want to pull it back on itself because then that will just run through this whole section here and it'll, it'll get away from you. So we're pushing it away from ourselves when we're doing that. So yeah, that was something I saw in a Jonathan Katz Moses video. But yeah, right hand, some of that, that's the direction of the spin. And uh, yeah, job's good. Right, let's get this uh, slowed down just a touch. That's a bit messy, and it's a little bit uh, it's a little bit burnt on the corners. But we'll get some sanding on this puppy now, and that should turn out quite pleasantly. Fingers crossed. Right, so that's broken. That so we've got a uh, a kind of a curvy edge going on. I'm going to go over it just with a little bit of uh, 220 now, and uh, yeah. I'm hoping that getting a nice smooth finish, um, it doesn't have to be glassy smooth, you know, because we're going to be putting a finish on top of it. But this is obviously something that you can really go to town with if you want to. Something that I would like to try that I've never done before, and so, you know, why wouldn't you do it on a video that you're making to try and show how to make something, is I'm going to put, I'm going to use the router and just indent, not uh, numbers, but just sort of a gash. I'll show you what I mean, but let's try, obviously not doing things properly and mathematically and all that sort of nonsense, but if you want to do things properly, you can. So we've got marks at 6, 9, 12 uh, and 3. What I'm hoping is I can use this jig that I've made to line that up with the numbers like so and then that flicks back and then I can use the router to do what we need to do. <laughs> that has not gone well at all. And this is why you should clamp stuff down. Bugger. Right. Not cool. Not cool. I really, really cocked those up. But, you know, this is a, 
this is an idea for stuff to do rather than a this is this is a, a thing to do so you know if you're going to do this a know what you're doing when it comes to routing and b clamp it So there we go. We've got a bit of a sort of a funky kind of thing going on there. The only other option I think I would have is to make like that one and that one wider. Uh, well, all of them wider. And worse it is. <laughs> right, that looks really ugly at the minute and not straight. But let us see if we can chisel this out to make it look a little bit nicer. Okay, so I'm hoping that I've just not lost everything. I've just had to do some bits and bobs with the camera. Um, so I've sort of carved out and cleaned out these areas a little bit. But my idea is to stain this wood and then we're going to infill these with another colour. And that will sort of stand out and uh, and hopefully make it look less crap. I'm going to be using this, uh, this Tretex. Um, this is a medium oak colour and Tretex Colour Tone Ultra. Tretex did send me a couple of these uh, little taster pots to see if I liked them. And so far, I think they've been going super well. So what I'm going to do, pour a little bit in here. What we haven't done yet is we haven't sort of made sure that the uh, the scent hole is fine for the workings but that's fine to do as a kind of a last job so we'll leave that for a couple of minutes and then uh, we can uh, we can rub it off with a cleaner cloth okay so i did just put a uh, a very very thin coat uh, over the top of it just to make it a little bit darker now you could obviously flame this instead of doing this so there's a whole bunch of things you could do i did think about filling in these these gaps with acrylic resin i could do some cool stuff with that but to be honest with you i can't be asked so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just let that all soak in overnight give it a little bit of a, a rub down in the morning throw some uh, throw some uh, wax over the top of it and then we'll put the workings into it and uh, and jobs are good. And I'm doing this over the course of three days because I have not planned this out at all. However, if you want to uh, if you want to take your time on it, obviously you can uh, you can do it over the course of a weekend or even uh, or even quicker. Get that out of the sunlight. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think that's got a nice bit of character. I like the way that's going. I don't like the number areas, but uh, you know, shit happens. Well, what a journey this has been so far. So I left this to uh, dry overnight and this is what we're dealing with. Now, I uh, cut these out yesterday, as you can tell, to try and hide the uh, the cock up that I made. Now then, apparently, uh, to be a good work woodworker, it's not about not making mistakes. It's about being able to cover them up. So <laughs> what I've decided to do, um, I just came outside and um, made a quick little MDF little um shape like so and then cut out four quarters using the router for that one now this is excessive you don't need to do this if you're making your own version of this i've just done it because i because i cocked up there i want it to not look as rubbish so what i'm going to be doing is I will be having um, these sections in here like that. Now I'm going to stain these a different colour. I don't know which colour yet, but uh, yeah, so they're going to sit over the top of the clock like so, and at the three, six, and nine, and 12, and so cover up the cock ups that I've made and give a little bit of extra texture to the piece. So yeah, so I don't know whether I'm going to go lighter or darker. We'll find out by the end of the video. But what I need to do is this here is one of the pieces that we're going to be using now these sections come in uh, from amazon these these uh, are the workings a battery working single double a working uh, for a clock these come to about six or seven pounds each something like that so we're well within budget still which is great um, and it needs an eight millimeter hole drilled through the wood so i have just expanded that five millimeter to eight millimeter in the middle 
Now then, that will go into the uh, the piece like so, or into the clock like that. Um, so you can figure out your orientation. But what I like to do is, if I put this fairly square on, I can have it so it's going to be orientated sort of vertically grained or horizontally grained. So um, yeah, it's it's it, you're not precious about which way round it goes. The only difference is that there is a little hanger that you can that you will put on here. Um, which will stick out the top. So I think for me vertically, I'm going I'm to go with the uh, the vertical idea like so. Um, so I think that looks the best. Uh, so yeah, that's how I'm going to make this fit in. Now, this wood is a little bit too thick for the workings. You can see that we're not really even poking through very much in the middle there. So I'm going to need to route out a little bit of this at the back. Again, I'll be using my 40 pound katsu uh, with an up bit and I've made this which is it does this doesn't have to be perfect so I don't care if it's not absolutely perfectly square but it gives you an idea about what we're doing so yeah I've made this square and this gives me just over five centimeters um, around each side which will cope with the space between the middle of my blade and the edge so then when I run this around the outside I will have a square more or less that is pretty much the shape that we want so that's what I'm going to do now um, we're going to all I did I did this on the bandsaw and then I used a bit of CA glue just to um, uh, glue up the bit rather than trying to uh, the, the, the kerf rather than trying to fill it with anything. That works fine for what I need. So this is what we're going to use. Stick that onto the back of the clock, wang the route around, and then uh, job's good. I think these might be a little bit thick at the minute, and I haven't decided whether I want to keep these thick. Um, so they sort of protrude from the clock, so I'm going to need to write deeper or not. Again, though, none of this is something that you have to do. You can have a thinner clock, you can have a thinner wood to start with, but I really do recommend, if you haven't got one, um, one of these little katsu routers are, are really, really very good for the money. Uh, but... I've got this on a cloth at the minute, as you'll see, a sort of a non-sticky thing. And so I just need to, I'm going to put some double-sided sticky tape down to make sure that my uh, template stays where I want it to go this time. <laughs> and uh, we'll take it from there. Let me show you what I'm doing. Now, the only thing you do want to do here is try and get it as uh, fairly sort of square-ish as you can. And I happen to know that about five and a half centimetres is where I want it and that will be it i have made it a little bit oversized and that means that um, there will be a little bit of movement inside there for uh, for when it comes to it all righty so that's going to go into there like so these pieces are going to go on here so now I'm going to figure out what colour I'm going to put, I'm going to stain these pieces with um, and, uh, and we'll take it from there and I'll show you. I'll give these a little bit of a sanding first as well because they're a little bit on the on the kind of the, the, the rough side. So I'll give these a sanding and then we will uh, see where we're at from there. All right, so what I've just done there, I thought I was recording, but I clearly wasn't. Um, I've just covered all of these in this Treetex mahogany um color uh color tone and it's come out sort of a, a dark red mahogany-ish kind of vibe going on uh which I'm, I'm kind of into so i'll be rubbing that off in a second uh just clean up my workspace a little bit and then uh, we'll see what these look like on the clock okay so in the pack i've got a multi-pack so in here this is a bunch of different hands that we can use um well, these ones are actually all the same, so that's handy. But yeah, so these are all different, a bunch of different hands. So you've got a minute hand, an hour hand, and a second hand that have to go in on a uh, specific kind of uh, format. When it comes to the uh, the hanger, this is where it's important to get things correct on uh, on your uh, on your planning side, because if you you want to make sure that you get the the thingy bent over backwards like that, so it comes out of the back of the system that way once you've attached that to the inside of your clock then bosh and then you can use that hanger to then hang your clock up 
Obviously, you can make the clock thicker with a deeper route so, um, so it doesn't protrude at all, but this is just what we're going for today. It's not going to be a problem once it's hung up. All right, so we've got the mechanism. We've got the little back piece. Then there is uh, the little rubber washer that's got a sort of a, an indent coming out of it. So that means that we can help sort of situate things. Schmoozle it a bit if we need to, but let's get the, uh, the washer on first. And then the nut. And away we go. We're pretty much ready to uh, put things together. So all we've got to do is just get a little uh, pair of pliers or something, tighten up that little nut that holds everything together and we're good to go. Okay, so what I've done now is I've kind of laid these pieces out where I want them. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop a little bit of, uh, of tight bond on the back of them, as well as a little bit of super glue with a little bit of activator. I'm using Mitre Fast, obviously not a sponsor, but uh, that's stuff that's cheap on, uh, on Amazon. So that's where I went. Obviously, I did all that by eye and it's not perfect, but it's good. This is only going to hang up in my workshop anyway, so I'm OK with that. But uh, yeah, that's what we're going for so far. Then we need to get the hands because I've got a multi pack. I've got a bunch of different types of um, hands that I can use. However, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these ones because these are sort of the ones that look a little bit like twigs. Um, and uh, like I say, this is just going to be in my uh, in my workshop and not any others. So the way this goes is you put the hour hand on first that goes down. Then you pop on the uh, the minute hand that goes down and then you've got the second hand or the hand for the seconds, which just pops on on top of all of that. However, we're just going to have to pop a finish over the whole thing first and then uh, then we're finally done. And here we are finally all done. I can't quite remember what I did like yesterday when I, when I was uh, working on the clock, but I can tell you what I'm pretty sure I remember I did. Um, so first of all, one of the things that I wanted to highlight was this black um, little square here. Now I used, I used something different that I hadn't used before. And this is what I was going to use to fill in the uh, big old gouges that I made by mistake. And that's this uh, Plasti Dip stuff. Now I used to use this back in the day on, uh, on motorbike things because it was, it was excellent. There's no primer, no nothing. You just spray it on and it gives a kind of a, a, a kind of a rubberized kind of finish, which is fantastic. And I thought, do you know what? That might work on wood because it might kind of allow a, a, a kind of a, a, a self leveling kind of vibe going on. Um, and it turns out that when you put it on wood, you can still kind of see the grain through it and it kind of works out well. Now on metal, because it comes out in a kind of a rubberized finish, you can just peel it off if you don't like it. Um, and I imagine you probably could with this as well. But uh, yeah, that was a, an experiment. It went wrong, but good to have in the old brain box because yeah, it's, uh, it's good stuff. But what I did, I didn't have any wood lacquer, so I pressed, I, I, uh, I sprayed on uh, clear coat for cars. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we've come up with. Now, the design might not be perfect, to be fair, but I think we managed to uh, hide our mistakes. And like I said before, a good woodworker isn't someone who doesn't make mistakes, but someone who can hide them. So, yeah, that's um, that's what we're looking at right there. Um, it's got a bit of a, a sheen to it, um, but it's got a kind of a vibe that I'm uh, I'm into. I think it looks kind of cool. Um, I just accidentally pressed the thingy. Uh, but the key thing on this is that it is a uh, it's a silent ticker. It doesn't it doesn't tick when it when it uh, moves, which is ideal. Um, and, you know, I could have I could have sprayed the hands white or something, but uh, I'm not going to sell this one, obviously, because there's a load of mistakes in it. But so I'm just going to have this up in the workshop. But uh, yeah, hopefully this video has shown that you don't need skill. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you don't need to spend very much. That entire thing, um, you know, worked out to be, uh, well, the, the, the wood was 
without the, the bits of pine that I used on the front there. Um, but that was £5.20 something. The uh, the clock bit would have worked out to be about £6 something or other. Uh, I'll, I'll leave some links down below. There might be affiliate links, but I'll leave some links down below. Um, and... Um, yeah, I mean, it's the rest is use what you have in your workshop. When it comes to the tools, the routing stuff that I did, uh, you don't have to do. You know, I routed the uh, the the corners of the front of this. You could have broken that by hand when you was hand sanding. No problem at all. Um, when I tried to do the uh, the sort of the the markings for the for the numbers. Obviously, there's a phone call gig in. When I tried to do the marking for the numbers, then uh, clearly that didn't work. So, um, you know, that's something that I'm going to practice on and uh, and figure out how to do better. But um, to make a basic clock, you can do whatever you want. You could chisel in some numbers. You could um, you can buy numbers that you can then stain and then just stick on. That are kind of a balsa wood kind of material. You can do all sorts of things. But the basics is. If you can make something round and drill a couple of holes, then you could make a clock out of whatever you like incredibly cheaply over the course of a weekend. I've taken a little bit longer because, you know, I'm only in here a few hours at a time. But over the course of a weekend, jobs are good. Make yourself a clock. Make it for other people. Sell them at craft fairs. Do things. But that, very little cost pretty basic tools and um, you can make them to look however you want and uh, and uh, jobs are good. So I hope you found that was helpful. I imagine this was a little bit of a longer video again. I'm going to try and edit it right down but if you did enjoy this thank you so much and uh, please would you hit the subscribe button maybe um, give it a like as well if you think this has been useful. I will show you how to make some better clocks and funkier ones with different types of woods and all that sort of nonsense later on down the line but this was just a basic make a clock super cheap from B&Q pretty much. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.